Chapter 1. The Chiao family has a fake family member Rao City's weather in June was like a stove. The scorching sun created layers of heat waves on the asphalt road. It was so hot that no one was seen on the streets. Xiao Nian came out of the room dragging her newly packed luggage. She could already hear Xiao Chen's chatter before she was downstairs. Mom and Dad, are Xiao Nian's biological parents really coming to pick her up? Father Chiao sternly replied, It's none of your business. Are you done practicing for the piano piece you're performing later? Your grandmother's friend will be coming from Beijing. She's a humanities professor and a national pianist. If you perform well, and with the help of your grandmother, your application to a university in. Beijing will be settled. I have been practicing. Before Chiao Nian headed down, she heard Xiao Chan whining again. Dad, what do you think sister's biological parents look like? She innocently rambled on. Her biological parents said they were coming the day before, yet they're only arriving today. Could it be that they took a train from a ravine to come here? Xiao Nian couldn't help but pause in her footsteps, feeling insulted. Three months ago, she unknowingly found out that her dear sister Chiao Chen and her boyfriend were having an intimate relationship and cheating on her. She couldn't hold back her anger and expose the matter, only to find out that she wasn't part of the Chiao family but just a foster child that they adopted from the orphanage. The Chiao family didn't adopt her because they wanted to do a good deed. It was because Chiao Chen was born with a rare blood disease. Other than taking medications, she also required blood transfusions every month. The Chiao family ran a company that was successfully listed last year, so they were considered well-known in Rao City. If Chiao Chen's illness could be treated with money, it would save the Chiao family from trouble. Unfortunately, other than being born with illness, Chiao Chen also had the rare RH blood type. Only one in 100,000 would inherit such a blood type. Because it was so rare, hospitals called this blood type the panda blood. It meant that it was more precious than a panda. The Chiao family had the financial capability, but it wasn't certain that the hospital would have enough blood for Chiao Chen every month. Thus, the Chiao family came up with the idea of adopting a child with a matching blood type from an orphanage to act as a blood bag for Chiao Chen. She was that free blood bag. From a young age, Xiao Nian had been taught to be a good sister by giving the pretty clothes and the awards to her younger sister. If it wasn't for the matter between Xiao Chen and Fu Go, she would still be kept in the dark. The Xiao family told her about it only because Xiao Chen had almost fully recovered after receiving the treatment in the past years and no longer required medication or blood transfusion. She was of no use anymore. Grandma Xiao was also so upset that she blew up the matter between Xiao Chen and Fu Go at Xiao Chen's birthday party, so they exposed her identity in front of everyone to save Xiao Chen and the Xiao family's reputation. Father Xiao didn't want to talk about Xiao Nian. Stop talking. Xiao Chen replied defiantly, I'm not wrong. If they could afford the flight tickets, they would have been here by now. They're probably paupers. Enough. Father Chiao saw Chiao Nian coming down and softly stopped her. The first thing that came into sight was her wild face. She was wearing a light blue t-shirt with a red and white striped flannel. The hem casually tucked into her denim shorts, revealing a pair of fair and slim legs. Everyone in the family had a fair complexion, but Chiao Nian was even fairer. Due to how fair she was, Xiao Nian's eyes seemed extra dark. When he looked at her, Xiao Weimin always felt a sense of distance from her. It was probably because she wasn't his biological daughter. Nian Nian, are you done packing your stuff? Father Xiao asked her gently. After all, they had raised her for more than 10 years. Xiao Nian came down with her light luggage and nodded. When Xiao Chen saw her, she immediately acted as if nothing happened and shouted, Sister. Xiao Nian couldn't be bothered to reply to her and walked past her directly. Xiao Chen was upset by being ignored by Xiao Nian. She looked down pouting, her pale face as delicate as white flowers in the wind. 
Witnessing this, He Yu Chuan's face darkened. Holding her crutches, she scolded. Chun Chun is talking to you, can't you hear? Xiao Chun immediately took her hand, shook her head, and tried to put in a good word for her. Grandma, it's fine. Sister isn't in a good mood. I'm all right. Hearing what she said, He Yu Chuan's impression of Xiao Nian became worse. She spoke to her in disgust. It's no doubt you aren't a child of the Chiao family. You still can't get rid of the pettiness after so many years. Mom. Xiao Weiming pleaded. He then walked towards Chiao Nian and handed her a card. Here's 10,000 yuan. He sighed and insisted that Xiao Nian take it. Take it. When you go back, you have to be obedient. Use it to buy some clothes. In the future, you may need it for your studies too. He had always been careful. This was a critical period for the Chiao family as they just received a development project from the government. It was best not to create unnecessary problems. He once investigated Xiao Nian's biological parents. They had the surname Jiang, worked as teachers, and were from Luaha County. Luaha County was 300 kilometers from Rao City, a notoriously poor area. Every year, entrepreneurs would donate to Luaha County as part of poverty alleviation. He had donated before as well. Xiao Nian was already in third year of high school. When she returned to Luaha County, it was almost impossible for her to get into a university. This was unlike Xiao Chen, who was able to study at Beijing University after completing high school in Rao City. Her life would be completely ruined. Chapter 2 She's my fiancé to translator, Atlas Studios editor. Atlas Studios he couldn't bear to, but he stuffed the card into Xiao Nian's hand anyway. He looked up at her and asked gently, Have you gotten all your things? You can take the necklace that I got you for your 10th birthday with you. I gave it to you, so it's yours now. You can take it. He Yu Juan furrowed her brows and eyed Xiao Nian unhappily. Because of her place in the family, He Yu Juan did not have the cheek to mention anything about the 3,000 yuan necklace. Xiao Chen stood by her side obediently and added on, That's right, sister. Since dad already gave it to you, just take it. He perhaps, you'll need it in the future. She didn't make herself clear, but Xiao Nian knew what she was getting at. Xiao Nian glanced at her coldly. Xiao Chen gave her an elegant smile in return. That high and mighty expression was practically carved onto every other Xiao family member. Xiao Nian picked her bag up and handed the card back to Xiao Weiman, saying expressionlessly, I left the necklace in the drawer. You guys can look for it if you don't believe me. Besides the notebook I bought for myself, I didn't take anything from the Xiao family. The expressions of the Xiao family members turned a little awful especially He Yu Juan and Mother Chiao, who hadn't even bothered to say anything. Xiao Nian was as disobedient as a child could get and constantly made things difficult for the people around her. Xiao Chen glanced at Xiao Nian's bag and her eyes glinted. Sister, that's not what Dad, Mom, and Grandma meant. You're too sensitive. We've lived together for over 10 years. Even though you've found your biological parents, you're still my sister. We hope that you'll live well in the future too. If you don't want the necklace, at least keep the 10,000 yuan that dad gave you. Luaha County is very different from Rao City. You'll need to spend more there. Xiao Weiman added with a frown. That's right, keep the money. I don't need it. She had some money of her own. Xiao Nian didn't keep his card and didn't intend to have anything to do with the Chao family anymore. At this point, her cell phone rang. She placed the bank card that Xiao Weiman had given her on the table and then looked at the phone screen. She then said to the Chao family members, My family is here, I'll leave first. He Yu Juan scoffed as she watched Xiao Nian leave. She remarked sarcastically, Humph. What an ingrate. You've raised her for over 10 years and she didn't even bother thanking you before leaving. Grandma, sister is perhaps too excited to see her biological parents. 
Chao Chan said gently. Too bad, Chao Nian's biological parents were just peasants who couldn't even enter their villa. What a joke. Sister said she only took her notebook with her, but her bag looked so packed and heavy. It didn't look like it only contained a notebook. Father Chiao shook his head and sighed hypocritically. Forget it. We've raised her for over a decade anyway. Let her take whatever she wants with her. We don't need that kind of money anyway. Piyu Juan supported herself with her walking stick as she watched the figure disappear into the distance. She said with disdain, it's good that she's left. She was never one of us anyway. Chun Chun, don't you call her sister anymore. She isn't fit to be your sister. Go and get changed. You'll have to make good your chance later when we're at Waterside Loft. There was always someone more outstanding out there. Although the Chiao family was considered rather powerful in Rao City, they were still inferior in status compared to the Jiang and Tang families. Xiao Nian couldn't hear them clearly anymore, but she could detect the joy in Xiao Chen's voice and the happiness of the Chiao family collectively. Asterisk it was a hot day, and the tar road was heating up. There was practically nobody outside except a few elderly people seeking shade under some large trees. Beyond the rose garden, a black Volkswagen was parked by the roadside. Jiang Li glanced at his watch. It had been about half an hour, but no one was walking out of the villa yet. He wound down the car window and peered outwards impatiently. The warm air from outside poured in and the man in the back seat quickly ordered, shut the window. It wasn't a loud voice, but the tone was unmistakably firm and held a certain oppressive power that was impossible to ignore. Chapter 3, So, It's a Hidden Big Boss Translator, Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios his mother had mentioned before that his second aunt used to be much prettier than all the current female celebrities when she was younger. Back then, he thought that his mother had no idea what she was talking about. But he trusted her now. What a slap to his own face. She was so beautiful. On the other side, Chao Nian was talking to someone on the phone. Damn, the Chao family really chased you out? They're terrible. They used you in exchange for your sister's life and even guilt-tripped you by claiming to be your kin. And now they're chasing you out the moment they no longer see a use for you. Had you known, you shouldn't have done so much to treat Xiao Chen's illness. They don't know that if it wasn't for you, Xiao Chen wouldn't even be able to live past 20. They think that hemophilia is a flu or something and can be treated with just a pill. Xiao Nian saw someone walking towards her now. She casually said on the phone, No matter what, the Xiao family did raise me. I've repaid them by treating Xiao Chen. Now, we have nothing to do with each other. The person on the line sounded indignant. Don't you know how much you've helped the Xiao family all these years? If it wasn't for you, Xiao Weimin would never have been able to expand his family from Rao City to the capital. He's too dumb for that. And that younger sister of yours. You gave her tuition and helped her with her tunes. That family made you do everything possible. I used to think that they were your biological family members, but were simply biased towards your sister. Then, when I found out that they were actually not related to you, I realized how shameless they were. They knew full well that you weren't related to them by blood and still took advantage of you without treating you like family. Xiao Nian smiled, knowing that everything the other party said was accurate. I know all about it. Xiao Nian saw that Jiang Li was approaching and lowered her volume. I have something else to attend to. I'll hang up first. Where are you staying tonight? Do you need me to fetch you from Rao City? No need. My family is coming to get me. You're really going to look for your biological parents. Xiao Nian looked rather nonchalant as she said, I need to know my roots at least, who I am and where I come from. The person on the line went quiet. Xiao Nian didn't want to guess what he was thinking and simply said, bye. She hung up and kept her cell phone in her pocket before Jiang Li got to her. Everyone liked pretty people and things. Jiang Li happily took her stuff and carried them for her. 
Nian Nian, am I right? I'm your cousin, Jiang Li. Just calling me second brother will do. Xiao Nian looked up at him. Jiang Li was tall and rather good looking, with a smile that made him look approachable. Some of his hair was highlighted in a bright purple, giving him a unique personality in his simple elegance. HM, she felt like she'd seen this face before. Xiao Nian wasn't one who remembered faces well. If someone wasn't important enough to her, she'd just forget them. MM, nice to meet you, I'm Xiao Nian. She greeted him politely. So far, she seemed rather obedient and sweet, at least to Jiang Li. Grandpa's legs aren't in a very good condition and he can't take a plane, so he got me to pick you up. He's taking a train and will arrive later. Your dad and my parents have reserved a place at Waterside Loft, and they should be there by now. Let's head there. Jiang Li smiled as he spoke to her. Nian Nian, I've got another friend in the car. He'll be joining us later. I hope you don't mind. Chapter 4 2 Million Yuan Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios' Xiao Nian evaded his hand and did not seem to want his help with her bags. She kept a step behind him as they headed to the car and responded, I don't mind. Jiang Li looked at his empty hands and then at his young cousin. He seemed a little confused. How had she evaded him? He hadn't seen it clearly. Jiang Li didn't think too much about it and opened the door to the back seat for her. It's warm outside, get in first. Xiao Nian had no idea what her biological parents looked like and who they were. She simply put her information up on a website for parents to look for their lost children. It didn't take long for someone to contact her. Xiao Weiman did the rest after she was contacted. Xiao Chan had even, accidentally, revealed to her that her parents were teachers from Luaha County. Xiao Nian looked up at the sky and then kept her gaze. She knew this car model. Tang Jin had told her that the car itself cost 2 million yuan. This car even had a sky roof and would cost at least 3.8 million yuan. Xiao Nian raised her brow. The car that Xiao Weimin got two years back was just 5 million yuan. Just who was this grandfather she had in Luaha County? The cool air hit her the moment she entered the car, and she saw the friend who was joining them for a meal later. The man seemed to be in his early 20s and appeared a little cold. There was no brand logo on his shirt, but the workmanship was fantastic. The shirt fit him perfectly. The gold buttons reflected the sunlight beautifully, and there didn't seem to be a single wrinkle on his top. He looked like someone difficult to get along with, but there were several beaded bracelets around his wrist, bringing about a faint scent of sandalwood in the car. He was a strong Buddhist? Jiang Li introduced him to her. Nian Nian, he's my friend Yi Wang Chuan. You can call him Brother Yi. Xiao Nian glanced at him again. The car had huge legroom, but this man's long legs seemed to be in an awkward position. Xiao Nian felt his gaze on her and greeted him, Brother Yi, with her head down. Yi Wang Chuan seemed surprised to hear how meekly she greeted him. He looked at the girl sitting by his side. Her skin was so, so fair. When she looked up again and peered out the car window, he could see her beautiful lashes curled upwards. She was such a sweet little girl. Jiang Li found a topic to engage her with every now and then, for fear that she'd feel awkward in the car. He also tried to introduce her family background to her. Only the man sitting right beside her kept silent the whole time. But he was like a resting lion. Quiet as he was, his presence was impossible to ignore. They arrived at their destination pretty soon. Waterside Loft was situated in the city center on prime land. It was in the busiest area possible but had a great view of the greenery as well. Waterside Loft provided some quiet in the otherwise busy environment. Hence, it was a popular choice. I'll park the car. Jiang Li stopped the car at the entrance and said to the man behind, Master Wang, I've booked the private room. You can take Nian Nian there first. I'll go over once I've parked the car. Xiao Nian finally heard the man beside her speak. Let's go, 